my instructions earlier. You know what I expect. Please give me a good, hard, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. And here's a look at William Monroe's family, and he's got everybody. He's got his <laughs> wife, he's got his kids, he's got his dad, he's got his uncle. Everybody's here. His dad was a uh, middleweight, pro middleweight, and his great uncle, Willie the Warm Monroe from Philly, beat Marvin Hagler. That's right. What a fighter was he? My, Marvin Hagler was the first one to, to say, that's the guy that really beat me. There was some question about the other two guys right. that, quote, <laughs> beat him. Now it's up to his nephew. Grand nephew, I should say. Monroe, the natural middleweight. Thompson had been fighting at 154 and says, I'm going back to 154, but for tonight, he steps up. Well, he certainly has the frame to fight at 160. The question is, is he sturdy enough? Now, neither one of these fighters has a history of being a big puncher, but Monroe has shown a, to be a little sturdier than Thompson so far. Both these guys very well spoken. The kinds of guys you can't help when you talk to them. You can't help but root for them. And two guys who you know are going to be successful whether it's inside the ring or outside the ring. Combination by Monroe. Left hand missed but the right hand got there. Interesting to see when you have two boxers, which fighter makes the fight. So far, it's been Thompson who's inching forward. His best punch is his jab by far. Good body work by Monroe. I'll tell you, Barry, we talked about these fighters coming off world title fight losses. Willie Monroe's loss was to Triple G. And yeah. there were moments in that fight, especially in the middle of the round, where he did really well. Yeah, that was, a, I'm sure, falls in the category of forgivable loss. Yeah, really. John Thompson had to go to England for his title fight. He fought for a vacant title and he lost to Liam Smith. But he was ahead on the cards when he was stopped in that fight. So both these guys had success in the fights, the title fights that ultimately brought fans. Effective round so far for Monroe. Thompson misses a couple of wild shots. Yeah, Monroe's given Thompson different looks. Threatening the counter with that left hand. Little, and little backhand there. As a result, I don't think Thompson has really gotten on track with that jab yet. Most of those missed. Now Thompson fighting southpaw as well. Thompson slipped the left hand in. Thompson will switch. Yeah, and he said he never thinks about it. It just happens in the flow of the fight. Well, he couldn't get his left jab uh, going. Maybe he can get his right jab going. Good right hand right there by Monroe. Back Thompson off. Action first round here. Final 10 seconds. Near clash of heads. Let's talk about the keys to victory first for Willie Monroe. Well, apply pressure. He didn't do much of that in the first round. I think he still won the round, but he is the bigger guy, so inside would be a good place to be. He should aim to the body because that will slow some of the movement of Thompson and counter with his left hand. He did that well in the first round. That'll nullify Thompson's jab. The other corner, John Thompson, he needs to keep the fight outside. Limit the exchanges. He can do that by sticking and moving. Don't square up. He has a habit of doing that, and when he does, if he's against the ropes, he gets in trouble. And finally, he needs to fire the right hand from the orthodox stance. He can catch the South Pole Monroe with that punch. He did do that a little bit, too, in that round. Not against the ropes, but in the center of the ring, he did have a tendency on occasion to square up in front of Monroe. Round two, Thompson in the red trunks, Monroe in the green and gold. Well, Barry, that, that first round was a good round for Monroe. And because these guys are both boxers, it's going to be interesting to see if, A, either one tries to make adjustments, and, of course, B, can they successfully make adjustments. Right now, I'd say it's Thompson that has to make the adjustment. One adjustment he's attempting. 
from about a minute to go in the first round forward is that he's fighting from southpaw stance. Right. No punches thrown so far in this round. Well, in the first round, Monroe was in counter-punching mode. It looks like he still is. And there it is right there, two shots. Off a left, a right hand by Thompson. Thompson did get there with a right hand. Monroe answered with a right of his own. Two pretty good jabs. That was the left hand that dropped him. And I, I think it was more that he was off balance than that he was hurt by that punch. Seven. Fourth time in Thompson's career he's been down. He didn't look hurt judging by his eyes. I think it was just a little off balance and got hit by that shot. Nice combination, both guys got there again. Don't you think Barry Monroe is just in a better rhythm? He's, he's yes. just boxing with more confidence. Yes. He seems to know his time will come, and his time has been a counter-punching time every single time. That's what he's looking to do. You pointed it out. And he's done, done so with some success. Well, he's got pretty fast hands. And now with that knockdown, he's in a situation here where he could take a pretty commanding lead in this fight early on. It's a great point, Barry, because if nothing happens the rest of the round, that's 10-8 for Monroe. Monroe's given Thompson a lot of right shoulder. And he ducks down a lot on his punches, throws from a very low position. You wonder if Thompson gave up on his... Uh, Orthodox stance a little early in this That's fight. Interesting, isn't it? He hasn't gone back to it. Very effective round. Key moment in this fight. Monroe starts it with a jab, and here's the counter punch. And, and Barry was right, Thompson was off balance before he got hit with that punch. But there was a punch, he did go down, so I think the referee was correct to score a knockdown. You see Monroe's gonna start it with a right hand, uh, here comes the counter left. And it was almost as if Thompson was trying to throw a left elbow there, but he was, was off balance. And he gets dropped, and I think he's down three points on the cards now after two rounds. Yeah, I have it the same way. And uh, as we said at the time, he, I don't believe he was hurt, but hey, knockdown's a knockdown. So we come to round three of this 10 round fight. Feature fight here on Show Extreme, still to come, of course, a triple header that you'll see over on. Showtime on Showtime Championship Boxing, and that should be an outstanding night of boxing from here in Verona. Speaking of the triple headed Barry, John Thompson, you see how tall he is? Well, he doesn't get much taller than Willie Nelson, does he? That's it? right. That's he will right. be in one of our fights in the triple headed. Six foot three junior middleweight. See a lot of patience from Monroe, and, and that patience is is because he's not getting hit by the jab. He knows Thompson might be a little hesitant to lead because he's getting countered. And so yeah. far, Thompson's landed nothing of power to, of note. No, no, absolutely. I think so far Monroe is uh, fighting a very smart fight. Ahead, hard to argue that he would be ahead by three points. There's a long jab, and then he ducked under the left hand from Thompson. Right, don't punch. It's okay. You good? Yeah. Well, the fact that Thompson's taller than Monroe, I think it's actually turning out to be an advantage for Monroe because he's sliding under punches, as you said. 
and just seems a little bit more athletic. Midway through round three, there was a right hand from Thompson, but not a lot on it. Nice subtle lateral movement, too, by Monroe when, when Thompson punches. Thompson isn't punching very much, as you can see. There was a good right hand from Monroe. Maybe the best punch of the fight, even though he's had a knockdown in the fight. Best defense in the world is counterpunching. Monroe's done it well. As a result, Thompson keeping his hands in his pockets. And staying just busy enough when Thompson does not throw that right hand a little bit short. But that left hand was not. Monroe pretty quick handed too. Punch. I got it. Quick handed Barry and also when he does counter he does it in combination. And all, very often he'll miss the first punch but land the second one or the third one. It's almost like Thompson is waiting on Monroe, and Monroe is not obliging him. <laughs> Left hand did get there from Thompson, but again, one only. <laughs> Round, I thought, for Monroe. His round, Barrett. This guy is putting softball on you for a reason because he can't deal with you, Nico. Okay. Lo que necesita que trabajes es camínalo. Camínalo el job. Abre la boca. Camínalo y tira tu job. Cuando tiras tu job, gancho y dale la vuelta. Tú lo vas a, lo vas a tirar, Nico. Yo sé, Nico. Más job. Manos arriba, jab, jab, cruzalo y dale la vuelta, ok, campeón, toma la vuelta. Hey, be first, right? Loosen up, add faint, okay? Take it all day. Take it all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. We gotta start doubling up. Yeah, I need more punches. Start doubling up. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now like that, hook up the jab. You do the damn thing, hook up the jab, jab. Yeah. Try it again. Yeah. Try it again. Fuck. Try it again. Stay more busy. Well, I heard John Thompson acknowledge the fact that he's got to throw more punches, and that, that's a fact. Yeah, that's Dewdrop Young in the corner. John Thompson outside the corner, uh, diagramming inbounds plays. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's real relevant. What does that mean? Yeah. John Thompson the third is the father of John Thompson. <laughs> Through three rounds, Thompson's thrown more punches, but Monroe has landed 46% of his shots. It's hard to imagine, quite honestly, that he has thrown more punches. Even he said, I've got to throw more. A wild right Stop. hand. Be careful. I, I, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. not like Monroe's been busy. It's just Thompson's been even quieter. And yeah. the reason he's been quieter is because he's been countered. Not much. Four punches, but none got there. The right hand. Missed also over the top of Monroe. Thompson trying a little too hard right now. You know, Willie Monroe, we're talking about a guy that was a, a legitimate top 10 middleweight when he fought Triple G. This is his first fight since. Double right hand. He talked to us about fighting Triple G said he hits you on the hip, he hits you on the butt, he hits you in the kidney. said, middle of the fight, he said, I couldn't move my legs. <laughs> Just missed that counter on a right hand in return from Thompson. When you uh, fight a tall fighter, Barry, it's always tempting to try to chop him down by going to the body. And William Monroe's been doing that. Look at that. That's a shutout. 20 to 0. Wow. John Thompson has landed a single body punch. He's just really not in this fight. He's not getting off. You talked about your keys to victory uh, early in this fight, and Monroe is absolutely adhering to those. I think he listened to you. Yeah, I thought he applied more pressure than he has, but he is banging the body. 
Of course, those keys were uh, written up with the idea that John Thompson would be fighting as a right-handed fighter. Yeah, and that's worth mentioning. He has not gone back. He's been in the southpaw stance since, what, midway through the first round? Yeah, I'd say it was right about then. And, and he's fought a bunch of southpaws in his career. I'm a little surprised he didn't show more patience. He's desperate now. You see those wild swings. Absolutely. I'm a church. Absolutely. Another nice combination. See, Monroe got there through two punches, got there with both of them. Thompson probably threw six, got there with none. Time. Another excellent round for Willie Monroe. Okay, you're winning the fight. Listen, one thing is, don't fight at his pace. Fight at your pace, okay? Fight at your pace, okay? Keep touching that body, right? Paint brush, change level, okay? And you got to throw that overhand, okay? Let's get up on your toes, get up off the move, right? Okay. All right, look at me. Check me out. Get up on the move, okay? But all Willie Monroe, it's been subtle. You see Thompson just trying too hard. He's a long-armed fighter. He shouldn't have to reach that much. Nice movement, and that's what I talked about before, the athleticism of Willie Monroe getting away from those punches. But a lot of those punches are telegraphed, Barry. Yeah. Monroe's not necessarily landing huge shots, but he's scoring. Thompson is Round five. And this our feature fight here on Show Extreme. On a full night of boxing from here at Turning Stone. There was a left hand by Thompson, but he pushed with it a little bit. Fight so far has been absolutely owned by Willie Monroe. He had a flash knockdown in the second round. And he has dictated the tempo of this fight virtually from the get-go. Yeah, and he's done so coming off a 13-month layoff since the Triple G fight. He told us yesterday, Barry, as you heard, that he took the fireman's test in Rochester, New York. He was ready to pack it in, yep. give up boxing. Yep. Said he scored very highly on it also. These guys are both, and I, I just think it's worthy of mention, both very smart guys. Yeah. Well, we know John Thompson from our Showbox series, and he studied ballet. He's an artist. Very multi-dimensional guy. Works with kids, tries to get them off the streets, into the classrooms, advanced education, said that's that's where his future lies. He also told us a very interesting story about meeting Muhammad Ali, and we said earlier, everybody has a story, but he was a red cap at the Newark airport when Muhammad Ali came through, and he said he was absolutely awed. He was just speechless at Ali, like everything we've, and everybody else has been saying. You know, sought him out, Talk to him. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Ali touched people one at a time. And right now, John Thompson's a little bit paralyzed. He, he hasn't made, it, made any adjustments. He's still fighting in the southpaw stance. And he's not taking a lot of punches, but he's not landing a lot of punches either. And he's behind on the cards. So with Thompson not leading as much, Monroe has less to counter against. This round actually may be the closest yet. And a right hand dropped him. And again, Thompson stepped right Three, into it. And four, a good, sharp five, right hand dropped him. Six, second knockdown. Seven. Eight. You good? All right, walk to me. And again, I believe it's a flash knockdown. There's a right hand from Thompson. Might be his best of the fight. Another right hand drops Thompson into the ropes. Thompson trying to fight back, and Monroe still being a little bit cautious here, as he should. Yeah, Thompson uh, throwing wild shots. You never know what you might walk into. It's up to Monroe to determine how badly hurt Thompson is. Is he there for the taking, or should he back off? He has another teammate round in his pocket. My sense is he's still not that hurt. That missed over the top of his head. I'm with you, Barry. I don't think he's that hurt either, but he is more aggressive. And by being more aggressive, he's walking into some shots. Yes. But again, Monroe just building up the lead. Yeah. Fight that motherfucker off the dock. Aye. Beat him off the dock. Aye. Fuck that South Pole. Now that church, you fight better off the dock. Fight him off the dock. 
Willie Monroe extending his lead. Let's see how this knockdown happened. Southpaw versus Southpaw. Nice feint. And was it really the jab that sent them down? I think it was. Wow. I don't think I realized that at the time. There's the jab. Well, there's no more punches, so it was the jab that sent them down. And in the audience, that is Brenda, William Monroe's wife. Happy for her husband, as she should be. He has dominated the fight thus far. Polite applause. I want to see some screaming there. Come on. <laughs> Husband just knocked the other guy down. Halfway mark of this 10 round fight. As we come to round guys. six. And I, I, I'm sure you have the card the same way. I've got Monroe in front by seven points. Yeah, 50 43. We're past the point of no return for John Thompson. He has to either score some knockdowns or get a knockout. He's not going to win a decision any other way. Well, Thompson has returned to fighting orthodox. Let's see if it makes a difference. He certainly was not getting his jab off fighting from a southpaw stance. His jab is his best punch. And before I get in trouble with the Monroe family, I will tell you that his wife is Brittany, not Brenda, as you said earlier. Well, he may have turned back to right-handed stance, but Thompson's no busier than he was in the other rounds. Look at Monroe. He's just poised and coiled yeah. to counterpunch. Yeah. But why not? Now, in this fight, he really didn't have to do a lot more. <laughs> Wild left-hand misses. And if you're Monroe coming off that fight with Triple G, well, you can fight a lot more confidently yeah. when you don't have to worry about getting knocked down or knocked out by one punch. Yep. You can make a mistake and get away with it against a John Thompson. Although I will add that for a guy who doesn't have a high knockout percentage, when Thompson won his Boxino tournament, he did it by knocking out a guy, Brandon Adams, that went the distance in losing to Willie Monroe. Yeah. So Thompson can score knockouts. And again, Monroe just looking to counter. A long left hand misses, and the right the hand punch. goes right over step. the top of the head. Monroe dictating the pace as well. If he doesn't want exchanges, if he wants to wrestle, all he has to do is set up a little bit further away, which is what he's doing now, inching backward. Well, not a lot going on this round, and I said that last round. And now that, that was a shot that might have gotten Monroe's attention. And another right hand. And Monroe, for the first time, covers up. Double left hand. Monroe escapes. Final 10 seconds. Obey the bell here. Little moment. Well, we talked about what a busy night it is of boxing here on Show Extreme and later on on Showtime. And there's the guy that will be one of our headliners tonight on Showtime Championship Boxing, Ruslan Provotnikov. He just makes for great fights. He's so peaceful now, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Not the guy we know, is it? No. <laughs> sure he's fighting this fight in his mind as we speak here. Be in there against John Molina, who could be a tough guy himself. Uh, we all know about Molina, what his fight with Matisse. What a fight that was. It's all coming your way at 9 o'clock Eastern on Showtime. Maybe a little bit of a wake-up call for Monroe. This is round seven. Oh, I thought Thompson maybe edged that last round. I did too. But of course, winning rounds 10 9, not going to get it done for him.
And then fighting Willie Monroe, this is just another tough opponent in a row for Thompson. His last eight opponents combined record 99, 5, and 5. Yeah. That's eight opponents. And he's stepping up in weight. And he's fighting Monroe near on Monroe's hometown of Rochester, right. New York. So right. not much in his favor. Said his career will resume at 154. Took this fight because it's an opportunity. Yeah, well, he's not too careful about who he fights, as, as, as that record, uh, combined say, record says. Say. And, so it's predictable that he would have taken a fight like this where he would be an underdog. Now, Monroe's buying time. I don't like it, Barry, because he was so successful setting up and waiting for the counter shots. Thompson had a little momentum from the prior round. Why give him a chance to get back in the fight? Unless Monroe's just resting. Could be taking a round off. Distance should not be a problem, really, for either of these guys. Monroe fighting the taller guy with the longer reach, yet he's not getting hit on the outside here. He's just on his bike this round. One minute remaining. Well, for the sake of scoring the round, I'd appreciate if somebody lands a solid Something, shot. Something, yes. Maybe Monroe landed that left hand there. Here's what's happening in this round. Look at this. There's 30 seconds left in this round. They've landed a combined two punches. I'm going to let Barry score this round. Yeah. I don't want any part of it. And I never score a round even. I'm going to give it to Mark Nelson. I'm going to abstain from scoring. <laughs> going to go into the corner now of John Molina. Looking very professorial. He will not look that way when uh, his fight comes up on Showtime Championship Boxing. This is a tough guy, and he's kind of in, I, don't, I wouldn't go to the extent of saying a last hurrah fight, but a very important fight for him. Oh, for sure. He's coming off a couple of tough fights. And he's the type of guy, he's unusual in that he's the type of guy, fans don't care if he wins or loses. His fights are so exciting, as the Matisse fight was, as the Mickey Bay fight on Showbox was, that, you know, win or lose, he's going to be asked to come back. And he's in with one of the toughest guys in boxing tonight, so it's I'll, fitting. I'll say. So John Molina, Ruslan Provotnikov, that is the main event on the triple header coming your way at 9 o'clock Eastern over on Showtime. Well, I'll tell you what Willie Monroe's doing in, in taking John Thompson out of this fight. He's also taking the crowd out of this fight. That's true. With this new uh, ultra-cautious approach. <laughs> right hand, left hand of the body. Again, just countering Thompson when he does throw a punch. And Barry, even if Monroe wins this fight on points, which very well could happen, these last few rounds are important for him. He came into this fight without any contract with a manager or promoter. So in, in essence, this is a little bit of an audition. Yes. And he wants to sell himself. And he's not going to be doing that by circling the ring and throwing no punches. Thompson now right in front of Monroe and just paws at him with a jab. Monroe's been the 10 round distance a couple of times. Breathing through his mouth though here in this seventh round. I beg your pardon, eighth round. Uh, 
Well, it's like it's coming a game of chicken, Barry. Which guy is going to fight and punch first? Neither one seems to want to. Well, uh, Thompson, I would think, has to. Yeah. That missed. Monroe just looking to counter Thompson. Just that simple. Does lead with a jab. Stop. Be careful. There you go. That's all right. There's been zero infighting in this bout. You mentioned Mark Nelson before. I don't think we've seen him in the whole, you know, he's no. been out of the picture pretty much. Yeah, I don't I can't remember breaking the fighters. No, not a clinch to be had. The left hand slipped in by Monroe. Sometimes when you get two boxers against each other, as I said at the top, one of them has to adapt or change his style. I think we saw that at a much higher level than this with Austin Trout and Eraslandy Lara, two southpaws, both boxers. Trout decided I have to be the aggressor. He got his butt kicked that fight. John Thompson has been sort of the aggressor in this fight coming forward. Hasn't worked for him. No, it hasn't. He's not comfortable and, and, doing it. And yet he's, it's his only chance, I believe. Yeah, especially at this point, sure. This round, particularly Thompson, did not do very much. You gotta back him up with the jab, okay? Oh, we're winning. We're winning. We're winning. Yeah, we're winning. Right? But you gotta back him up, okay? Hey, he's there all day. Okay? All right. Get on both rounds, campeon, okay? Two more rounds, two more rounds, champ. And you are winning the fight, you're winning the fight. Don't get careless. This pendejo wants to fucking throw stupid shit. This jerk wants to throw. That's why I'm staying away. He's throwing a lot of elbows. Yes. He's very careless, Mika. Great job. Hey, you doing your rounds? Yes, you are, Mika. Okay. You're up on the cross, okay? All right? Take over, take over now. Okay. Hey. All I want to do is bag this motherfucker up just a little bit. I'm telling you, right hand touch this motherfucker. He's going to go to sleep. You heard him two times. You ain't seen him. I got you, dude. Let's work. Let's keep on working, all right? Knock his ass down. Let's keep on working. Keep on working. Look. Bag this motherfucker up and let that shit go. The voice of Dewdrop Young. On my all moniker team, for sure. <laughs> Well, you heard what he said. He wants him to back Monroe up. In so many words. Average punches per round show stats. At this point in the fight, Thompson averaging 36. Yeah, probably about 18 below the division average. Monroe only 27. He's certainly made his punches count a little bit better. Yeah, he has. Two knockdowns in the fight, both scored by Monroe. Gave him an early big edge. He was seven points in front. I don't think you can really argue with that through five rounds. Talked about how far these guys have been. Well, Monroe's been Excellent here twice. Headbutt. That's Thompson okay. Keep going. Already Excellent in headbutt. uncharted waters. Yeah, Thompson's last fight in that title fight against Liam Smith over in England, he, uh, he got stopped in the seventh. And he, as I mentioned before, he was ahead on points, but against a very different style of opponent. An opponent against whom he was able to box, use his jab, use his movement. Here he's, he's the aggressor. At least in terms of ring geography, he's the aggressor. Yeah. So he's not letting his hands go the way you would think an aggressor would. And he was tested just to kind of follow Monroe around the ring rather than try to cut the ring on Monroe. Well, I'll give Monroe credit for having a game plan and, and carrying it through, but I don't love the way he's finishing this fight. We have a round and a half to go, and what he was doing to gain the big lead and score the knockdowns, he's not doing anymore. Okay, you're going to see him. He's just waiting on Thompson. Thompson not obliging him again. Thompson's not going to get any follow-up shots because Monroe's not going to let him. He escapes. Looks like there's a cut, though, alongside the eye. eye. I believe it's of Monroe. The blood is on Monroe's face. 
don't think it's anything that would affect anything in this fight. Right eye, Barry, I believe. Right eye, I believe. Yeah. Maybe alongside the eye. I don't, I don't believe it's going to affect anything. Final seconds of round nine. See if we can see how this cut occurred. Ah, left elbow and then a butt. Take your pick. I saw an elbow. Yeah, here's another look. Watch the elbow first. Left elbow and then actually it was Thompson who got butted. Wouldn't surprise me if that elbow opened up the cut. Yeah. It is alongside, yeah, you can see where they're working on. It's not in any kind of a place that it would really affect him, especially only three minutes left in this fight. To set one in there, all right? That's all it is. Okay? Do not be afraid to set one in there. Catch him with a couple of pop shots. All right? Okay. Jump on this motherfucker, bro. Jump on this motherfucker and then all in the room. Don't stop punching. You're behind in the fight, bro. You're behind. Jump on this motherfucker. Tenth and final round. Oh, come on. Here we William go, Monroe and John Thompson. Fight has been owned by William Monroe since the opening bell. And Monroe's corner, you heard him say, take a couple of shots. Thompson's moving forward. But again, reaching too far. When he reaches, his chin comes up. Monroe doing a little dance here. Back up on his toes to the left hand from Thompson. Thompson again, just kind of standing in front of Monroe. Well, Monroe's been fighting the last two, three rounds of this fight like a football team up 17 points in the fourth quarter, which yeah. just sends the fullback up the middle, play after play after play. He's in a prevent offense. Right. And again, it's going to probably get him a W, but I don't know that it's going to sell him as an attractive fighter for uh, would-be promoters and managers. But he fights a different kind of opponent. We'll fight a different kind of fight. Yeah. <clears throat> Body shots connected after nine rounds. 40 to three for Willie Monroe. Thompson again, and you can see he, he doesn't take that step to cut the ring. He just kind of follows Monroe. Just some updated numbers on what you were just talking about. Yeah, it's a running total. Wow. Four body shots in 10 rounds. Well, he's not going to land any body shots now because Monroe's not standing still. I got you. Step back. Inside the final minute of this fight, it would take a miracle, I have to think. It's not a lot Thompson can do when Monroe's moving like this. Thompson's not a big puncher to begin with. Close your eyes, throw an overhand right, and hope for the best. Yeah. yeah, that's about all you can do. Hope he's there. Again, countering, which he has done virtually the entire fight. Final seconds of this fight. Monroe, I feel pretty confident in saying he's going to walk away a winner here. You see the misses there? Brittany. And that. Well, Willie Monroe, uh, he might have given away maybe the last three rounds, you could argue. But with the two knockdowns in the fight, he could afford to give away the last three yeah. rounds. Yeah, I think the scoring is almost immaterial. 
All right, let's go inside the ropes now with uh, the assumed winner, William Monroe. Well, Monroe was effective from the beginning with counter shots. You see a right hook there, the southpaw left hand there. A knockdown, not on the cleanest punch, but we talked about how Thompson had pulled himself off balance before getting scraped by that punch. And then Thompson goes down from a jab. Again, you got to question his balance. You see how hard Thompson tries to punch with that left hand. There he's down again. And he was hurt. He was hurt by a jab. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was perfect timing, flesh, as you said. Here's the final number, Steve. Yeah, Monroe's uh, power percentage came way down. Interesting that Thompson threw more punches. There were not a lot of punches thrown in general in this fight. And the power shots, 40 to 35. Hey, maybe this fight will be a little closer on the cards than we have it, Barry. I have it 97-92 for Monroe. I gave two rounds to Thompson. So you probably have it a little wider. All right, let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. We will find out. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here at Turning Stone Resort and Casino, we go to the scorecards. Judging ringside, Don Ackerman sees the bout 96 to 92. Glenn Feldman scores at 95 to 93. And Wynn Kint sees the bout 99 to 89. All three in favor of the winner, Willie El Mongoose Monroe Jr. So William Monroe runs his record to 20 and 2, and uh, 